So I started um, the University of the Bahamas when it was the College of the Bahamas in 2013. Um, I was a part of the uh, inaugural, I guess, um, Student Government Association at the University of the Bahamas, which meant, you know, I joined as COBUS, and then we segued to SGA. And what that meant is we were around for that transition from the College of the Bahamas to the University of the Bahamas. And seeing that firsthand and seeing, you know, what that meant for our country and the future of higher education in the Bahamas, I think, hands down, it's easy to say that that transition is his biggest accomplishment and I hope that's going to be his greatest legacy um, on the Bahamas for sure. One of the greatest lessons I would have learned from Dr. Smith that I would say provided the biggest impact would have been to trust the process. Um, I'm sure that he would remember there was a particular instance where him and I would have had to have a conversation and he just reassured me of the need to trust how things are going and trust in my own ability to achieve success. Any institution, any business, any company, any government really is a reflection of its leader um, and I think that there can be no doubt that the values that um, uh, President Smith has, uh, has been able to permeate into the, the university um, and uh, with that it's laid a foundation for it to grow and become a real strong um, institution not only um, locally but also internationally. And I've always said that, that no, there is no great city in the world without a great university. Um, and I think Rodney Smith has laid the foundation uh, for um, a great university. Um, and no doubt, um, as time moves on, that will be recognized. And his values that he's instilled uh, will be appreciated. Before we had President Smith, faculty were referred to as lecturers and senior lecturers. With the coming of Dr. Smith uh, to the presidency of the University of the Bahamas, or to the then College of the Bahamas, we changed that nomenclature to instructor, lecturer, assistant professor, associate professor, and professor. So we saw an expansion of the categories for the naming of faculty which is really significant because now we had a clearly defined or a more clearly defined system of the hierarchical system for the faculty based on their scholarly achievements. Uh, my first official encounter with Dr. Smith would have to be uh, when I applied for the job of Dean of Students. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, anyone that would apply for a position at that level would be you know, a bit nervous because of, the, uh, of what's expected. Uh, but going into the interview, uh, for the mere fact that one, it was about a 15 minute interview, um, really spoke volumes. And I say that because um, how can someone really get an idea of who you are as a person from your resume without having an extensive uh, interview? But I, but I saw that as him having such a level of discernment. Um, and truly knowing what he was looking for and what the, uni and what the university was looking for at that time. So when Dr. Smith first came to the university, uh, in his first stint, I was a professor of English. Um, and he made quite an impression. Even in the short period of time he was there, um, there was just a, a, a certain confidence and a sense that things would get done. There was a great deal of excitement and anticipation. And I think generally he had a lot of support um, from faculty and, and staff. And, and uh, so, so it was no surprise that he was able to return. And when he returned in October 2014, I was the Vice President of Academic of Advancement, sorry. And so I've worked with him roughly six years. I took a break in between there for a little bit. So I've, I've, I've gotten to know him very well. He's been um, a mentor of sorts to me. Um, and it's been interesting observing him under some very, very tense situations. He brings a lot of composure. Um, he brings a lot of experience, an immense amount of experience to, to the job. And um, to his credit, he, he has built a good team, but most importantly, lets people do their job. So I think that's, that's, that's very important. He's not a micromanager. Dr. Smith is the kind of boss that you want to have. He builds you up. So I think over the last seven years, what he's really helped me do is gain confidence in the skills that I have that I'm really good at. 
So he'll say, you know, trust yourself. You know what you're doing. Rodney Smith served as the chief executive officer of the University of the Bahamas and his predecessor named organization longer than anyone else in the history of the institution. That in itself is a basis for honor. Two, Rodney Smith has the distinction of having been the chief executive officer at the time the journey from start through COB to full university status was accomplished. That itself is another basis for honor. Dr. Smith had a vision for growing and creating a university system. And a part of that was making sure that the Grand Bahama campus, or the Northern campus as it was then called, uh, expanded. And that involved in the first instance uh, creating the, the administrative structure to allow that. And so what he did first was to create a dean of students position and a dean of faculty position and then to promote the individual who was sitting as, I think it was associate vice president at the time, promoting that person to full vice president of, of UB North, which is the position that I assumed in, in 2017. And then eventually that was promoted to campus president. And so these uh, decisions on his part signal to the country the intention to really have the Grand Bahama campus blossom into a fully fledged sister campus of the Oaksfield campus, not to duplicate everything that is happening in, in, in um, New Providence, but to be able to offer um, unique programs unique to the northern, to the northern region. Um, that's also reflected in the fact that for the first time the university produced a strategic plan that was unique for UB North and then there was another one that was unique to, to Oaks Field. But we wanted to create a university city or a university town. That was one of his big, big issues. And of course, Dr. Smith, having had some experience in um, higher level education on an administrative side, knew and understood the importance of that. And so we had uh, begun discussions uh, with him and the board about how that might be possible. Now, that's a gigantic task, obviously. It would require some legislative adjustments, if not introduction of new legislation in order to accomplish. So that was a very important portion of our um, collaboration and, dis uh, and discussion, uh, creating this particular area, this geographical area, to be like a university town where the, the sense of being a part of a university, of a university community for our students, not only students, but also the faculty and those who are stakeholders within the university community, would feel a sense of being in that environment. Working with uh, Rodney Smith, um, President Smith was a big uh, part of ensuring that uh, we were able to transition. We felt when we brought him on that he had the skill set that was necessary, he had the drive, he had the support of the uh, university, and of course, he was a Bahamian, and we were extremely proud uh, that we would be able to appoint a Bahamian um, who had this requisite skill set and reputation um, in order to uh, for us to transition into the University of the Bahamas. And working with him was a was a delight. A very organized, very focused, uh, very patriotic, wanting what's best for the Bahamas and for the Bahamian students. He had a real focus on uh, students and doing what he could in order to to um, make them better and prepare them for the world. We have had, I think the, we've had several things that have significantly impacted our students. And I think the one of the main ones would be the implementation of the Bahamas Government Tertiary Grant. This afforded all eligible Bahamian students to an education where their fees are minimal and the majority of it is covered by the Bahamas Government. Um, in, in years past, we had a number of awards from the government. Um, we've had the Athletics Awards, we've had the Teachers Awards, we've had the Bursary, and the, each of them had their specific criteria. But the coming together of this award, the Bahamas Government Tertiary Grant, it has essentially leveled the playing field where all students, as long as they are not on academic probation and they are ineligible, um, they meet the eligibility requirements, they get that education. That has been significant 
It has helped many students who otherwise would not have been able to afford to come to the University of the Bahamas. The university at its time of inception were thinking about how do we create an identity that can not only connect to athletics but the student body. So Dr. Smith and his team of leaders, of course, they put out a competition to alumni and to other companies, which at the time I was, and they asked us who can help us create a mascot that's going to be blue. It was through the decision, and actually I would say the fortitude of the president, that my company was fortunate enough to be hired. So through the decision that he made to have our company engaged to create, that is not only the image, but the emotional response of a mascot, that is what I'm so proud of Dr. Smith for doing. If it was not for him believing in me as a Bahamian and as an alumnus of this institution, I would never be here right now in my position at the University of the Bahamas. The effects of it can be seen. We have chants, we have our mascot, we have engagement, we have the first ever mascot performers at the university, we have pride and people just shouting and knowing that in their hearts, you be mangoes now mean something more. But one of the things that really spoke to me that I will continue on even after he, 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 he leaves with us um, is uh, he introduced the student leaders meeting. Um, and before, uh, student leaders and student government association and, and other leaders would tend to run to the media um, and, you know, kind of put what's happening in UB out in, 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 the, in the news world um, and not really getting the, the, the the response they needed or the action they needed to actually uh, remedy the, the problem. So President Smith introduced what was called our student leaders meeting. We were student government association and other key student leaders met with all of the administrative council uh, members once a month where we came to the table. Uh, and, and, and the fun thing that I liked about that was that he, he ensured that everyone dressed professionally. Which, which put all of us on the same playing field. So all of us had on suits and ties and uh, well-dressed, well-professional, um, and students brought their issues to the table. He's excellent with his staff. He's the kind of leader who remembers all the small things like administrative professional days. And at Christmas time, he gives you gifts. You know, he's, he's a people person, and so that really helps him in his leadership. Dr. Rodney D. Smith, in my opinion, is someone who truly has a heart for people and it translates in all of his interactions with, with people um, day to day. Just the fact that he has an open door policy and he's available by WhatsApp or by telephone, he answers emails regularly. That's a big deal, in my opinion. Um, it also indicates to me that he just truly cares. Um, even if there are situations where he may not be able to personally assist, he tries to find a way to assist. This initiative branded as the Wilson Prize. Dr. Smith's leadership from A to B to C is the common thread through it all. And that includes the fact that uh, the way he's gone about engaging uh, Ms. Humblestone and, 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 and providing execute thing. We have a review board that is world class by any standard. In other words, he has done all to give us confidence that that vision of a, of a prize branded the Wilson Prize, can become an important part of, of, of encouraging serious scholarship in the country for a long time. Dr. Smith, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you've done with us. Thank you for your service to the university, your service to our country, of course, our, your service to our people. You've done so much for us. You will not be forgotten. And we hope that we, of course, will continue to be in touch with you and to see you. I wish you well. I thank you for the opportunity to serve with you because you have pushed us to grow. You have pushed me to grow so that I could become a better self. And I thank you for that. And I wish you well in, in all that you endeavor to do in the future. Thank you so much. Dr. Smith, I'd like to thank you for your service to the Bahamian people for your years of leadership of the University of the Bahamas. I want to thank you uh, for your vision. Thank you for your strength and your composure. It's been a pleasure being a part of your team. 
Thank you for working with me, tolerating my challenges, my uh, small rebellions. Thank you for seeing the, the potential. Thank you for believing in my ability and for sticking up for me when you had to. President, you have done a remarkable job. I wish to say thank you for all you have done to create this university and to advance us to the place we are today. We are forever grateful. Let me take this moment to acknowledge the deep gratitude I have for your many kindnesses and unwavering support during all of the years that I worked with you. While the new path unfolding before you may be an exciting one, I'm saddened by your departure. My prayer is that what comes next for you is as great as you are. What I most remember about President Smith was actually not his last stint, but his first stint as president. I remember he came to the then Teacher Education Division and we met upstairs in room E7, I think it is, and there he had the entire school, all of the lectures, we sat in a big circle, he came out of his office, he came to us, and he sat with us, and he listened to us, and he shared with us, and I found that to be very profound, and I, I knew right away that this was the kind of person that we needed um, back then to listen and to hear from us and what we were going through as lecturers. And then, of course, I want to commend him and congratulate him on being the force um, that helped to move us from uh, college to university, all that was done, we appreciate it very much and I believe that he will continue to make contributions to the Bahamas. Thank you, President Smith. Thank you. I, I just want to say, Dr. Smith, um, the Bahamas owes you a debt of gratitude. Um, you uh, really are a patriot. You return home. Uh, you were called to uh, ensure that the college became a university. You were passionate about it. You believed in it. Um, you set the groundwork, the framework, and the direction for it to happen. And I just want to say from myself, I am eternally grateful to you. It was a pleasure working with you, and I wish you all the very best as you either retire or move on to greener pastures. It has been a pleasure working with Dr. Rodney D. Smith as his executive assistant within the office of the president. Dr. Smith will be leaving a legacy here at the University of the Bahamas. I have had the privilege of working directly with Dr. Smith, and I would like to use this opportunity to thank him personally. Dr. Smith, you will be missed. I wish you all the best in your retirement. Thank you. So after seven years and about three months of working with Dr. Smith, I want to say thank you to him for his leadership of the university, but also just for being a good boss. And I want to say a friend. Dr. Smith has shared himself with everyone and with me. His family um, have been very kind to me in the years that I've been working, especially his wife, Dr. Christina Smith. And I think, you know, as a couple, they work very well together. They understand well what it is to run a university, that it is not just administration, that you're dealing with people, and you know, that you have to show them grace and love. And they both have done that. And it's one of the things that I really appreciate about Dr. Smith, and I'm gonna miss when he's gone. Thanks, Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith, you were a wonderful president while I was a student at the University of the Bahamas, a wonderful motivator, mentor, and I'd like to thank you for everything you've done, not only for me personally as a graduate of the university, but you know, just for this country um, and your contributions to higher education in the Bahamas. So from me to you, thank you so much for everything you've done, Dr. Smith. God bless you, oh, Rodney. I wish you, were, you and your wife and your family tremendous success, good health, wisdom, and much prosperity. For all of these reasons, we say thank you to Dr. Smith himself, but also to his wife, herself, the holder of an iron doctorate degree, herself. Because, um, let's face it, uh, there can be no doubt that her role even if invisible to some, 
would have been a big part of the success that has been achieved. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you for your service, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Because of your hard work, we're a university. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Smith. It's been a pleasure working with you, Dr. Smith. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Dr. Smith. It's been a pleasure working with you. Your leadership has proven beneficial for the university. Therefore, on behalf of the students and the Student Government Association, I wish to say thank you. Thank you for your leadership, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Smith. With as much respect as I can give, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Smith, for all that you've done, not just for me, but for the University of the Bahamas. People can take away anything from you, but they can never take away your education. Uh, and through your education, you can get back anything that you've lost already. I remember um, around the table talking about the need for national training. I remember around the table talking about the need to identify the needs of the country in order to grow a country. Um, I remember having conversations um, around the College of the Bahamas and the fact that it needed to become a University of the Bahamas and a research center nucleus for the country as well. I think a lot of those things have been achieved. I think that all of what was discussed around the table has not been achieved. And I think that if we were to go back and look at some of those things that we identified and we revise and move forward, I think seriously that the National Development Plan for the Bahamas is the way to make sure that everything that we need to achieve going forward is achieved. But it needs to be accepted by our government. It needs to be made the National Development Plan, not a draft. And then we need to implement it with the help and support of the University of the Bahamas had early days at UB but that was in the 70s when I used to teach for UB and it was in the 70s when I served on the Bahamas Association for Manpower Training and Development when we had the Nassau Technical College the Teachers Training College and we had government high school um, A-level grades and at BAMTAD that's when we started that's when we used to discuss how to amalgamate all into the College of the Bahamas this was back in 1974 so those were in the early planning stages of COB. Um, and in the years that followed, when I served as senior school psychologist for the Ministry of Education, I was the founding psychologist or pioneering psychologist for school psychology in the Bahamas in 1976. Um, that's when I used to teach some courses at Fanova University on the weekends. For a lot of our um, very well-known academics in the country, as well as teach at the College of the Bahamas psychology courses in the evenings. Everybody did not have buy-in for the University of the Bahamas. There were some individuals who said, why do we need a university? There were some individuals who said, why do we need to have international accreditation? Why do we need somebody else to validate us? Um, so these are a lot of things that we heard. Um, uh, but you, you have to stay focused because with your experience, with your background, with what you bring to the table, Oftentimes you're able to see where we could go and people have a tendency to see based on what their experiences have been and Sometimes people have their own agenda as to why they say things or why they oppose certain things and um, I think that makes for a, a, a healthy democracy To be honest with you very healthy democracy when people can speak their minds when people can oppose things um, But those who are in leadership positions those who are in transformative transitional positions must remain focused what fueled me at that time to get the job done? It was a lot of work. Did I know how much work was involved in it? No. Did I have the training perhaps to do the work? Yes. I think I had more training and exposure to do that job than any other Bahamian who is in higher education even up to today because of the wide exposure that I had um, and because of the psychology background that I brought to the table as well. Um, yes, it was very, very difficult at times. Uh, it required a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance. Um, and I lost my temper several times, um, inside and outside of the boardroom. Um, 
and I think my colleagues could remember times when I um, when I lost my temper even in council meetings, administrative council meetings. Um, but I think that I think the persistence, the never giving up, no matter what happens, uh, there will always be frustrating times. There will always be challenges. But you always have to find a way to continue growing this institution. I think if we started slipping and we started going backwards, it's going to be a very, very difficult. It's going to be more difficult moving forward if we allow ourselves to slip backwards. The development of character in our students has been important to me for several reasons. But in working towards developing character, good character, I think that things have to be put in place that help people to learn that level of discipline as well. And those are the things that we focus on at the University of the Bahamas. As a matter of fact, in our mission statement, we reference the development of character. But the university should be a microcosm of what a larger society should be. And that's what we hope to do here, set the example in terms of where we think or where, where the, the larger society, the country, should go by introducing those behaviors here first. Uh, even our, even our um, uh, compliance with, with disposable of cans and bottles and stuff like that, creating a more sustainable environment. Um, those are the things that we started here at the university, including getting rid of, we got rid of plastics before the country got rid of plastics. Uh, so things of that nature. Um, we believe very, very strongly, and we'll see this more, I think, in years to come. And I pray that we see this more in years to come. That whenever a UB student goes anywhere, internationally, in the Bahamas, you always could guess that that person went to University of the Bahamas. But not only by their education, their training, but by the way they compose themselves, by the way they conduct themselves. Um, Well-mannered, individuals of character, individuals that you can trust, individuals of moral character and integrity. The greatest thing you can do for the people that you work with is to show kindness. I really appreciate the opportunity to thank everyone that has worked with me over the years. Um, there are a lot of people that I depend on, a lot of people that I trust. Um, and there are a lot of people that I will not make a major decision on with them, without having a conversation with them. These are the people that you don't hear about. These are the people that influence the decisions of the president on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Persons who have supported me in so many different ways, in the office, outside of the office, emotionally, spiritually as well. Um, I, want to say, I want to say thank you to um, all of my colleagues and the faculty and, stu and um, staff as well as to our students. Um, and thank you to the Bahamian people for giving me the opportunity to be of service. Um, I have come across a lot of people, uh, particularly in recent months, that have expressed um, their appreciation for what has been able to be accomplished at the University of the Bahamas. And I want to say thank you to everyone I want to say thank you to everyone who has expressed their support over the years as well. Um, there are some people who are very, very special to me and they always will be. The Bahamas will always be at the center of my heart moving forward.